Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we're looking at Wonder Woman 77 meets the Bionic Woman. All right, so this one is super cool. Um, my friend Andy Mangles wrote that wrote this. This is like his brainchild. I believe he is the one who pitched it to Dynamite, and thankfully they said yes because it is the best thing ever. Um, Wonder Woman 77 was like a... Uh, series that DC did. I want to say it was like digital first, um, but they had different creative teams and um, Andy was supposed to be involved, I guess, but somehow wasn't. And we talked about it on my uh, botched podcast. Sorry, Andy, I'll try to make it up to you anyway. Um, so uh, he pitched this to Dynamite um, in lieu of like the regular Wonder Woman 77 series, which is, you know, a comic based on the Linda Carter comic like how they had uh, Batman 66 and they did this Wonder Woman 77 and now they're doing uh, Superman, whatever year that was, I guess it was 78 and uh, Batman 89. So, I mean, these are all based on like the properties. So I think it's very cool. I love these ad adaptations of, you know, um, the TV and or movie properties. I think they're great. I think they're great for fans. I think they're great for fans of both. And I think they're great for fans who just like love the movies too. Cause so many, like the Bionic Woman is like so beloved. Like she's not a, a comic book character, but to put her in a comic book with Wonder Woman 77, this is like my little gay fantasy come true from when I was little. Two of my favorite TV shows. I had like two of the dolls each. Like I was super rough on them. So I don't have them anymore. They're on my bucket list. Whatever. But you know one day. So anyway this great series. First of all I mean this is like top quality. Because uh, it just is. Like it's an event. And I feel like it was treated like one. It's six issues, which is very uh, ambitious, but, you know, makes the perfect size for a trade paperback, of course. So, we're, I think there were um, some alternate covers. I just bought this six series as a set. I had read it before, but I don't know what happened to the copies, but I had to get them all. But this had, like, all the covers I wanted. So, this is the Alex Ross cover, which is fantastic, because, and clearly, it's just straight up, like, honoring the show so much. You know, we have the Bionic running in her, like, amazing, you know, tracksuit or whatever. Linda Carter in her classic outfit. She just looks beautiful, smiling, adorned by the stars from the opening of the show with the great classic logos. I just love this book so much already. Just, like, right there. Like, it, it's almost kind of one of those things, like, it's so good just in concept and by that cover that the inside doesn't even need to be good, but it is. <clears throat> so it's written by Andy Mangles. Andy Mangles, I've known him for years. I met him at Comic-Con. Um, he's like the Wonder Woman expert. Um, it's funny because all my friends think of me when they hear Wonder Woman because I love her so much. So Andy is the person that I think of when I hear Wonder Woman because he's like so into her. Anyway, um, big history with her. Um, and a history as a writer. He wrote several Star Trek novels. I think he was put the first transgendered character into a Star Trek, into the Star Trek mythos. So, you know, he's no slouch. So we start out, you know, with the retelling of their origins. And um, I should point out that the art is by Judith Tan Tandora. So I, I believe was a relative newcomer at the time that she did this. Um, and we'll get into that. I mean, she did a solid job. She has a really pretty style. I don't know if it was just because the script is so dense. It does suffer a little bit. Not super crazy about the colors. They're fine, but they're borderline that airbrushy look of um, independent books from like the 80s. Um, very cool to have the letters done by Tom Orzakowski and Lois Buhalis, uh, husband and wife team, obviously. Tom is associated with years of, uh, uh, you know, lettering the X-Men and blah, blah, blah. And Lois is no slouch herself. So anyway, but this is like a great story. You know, Andy is like such an aficionado of Wonder Woman that he pulled out all the stops. 
and um you know they're just easter eggs galore there is just so much history you know that he uh i think he said he was very proud of himself because you know when the characters met they didn't you know battle each other for whatever reason but i have to say because i looked through a little bit of this earlier um you know, that's all good and fine, but now I kind of want to see them throw down like a big bionic woman versus Wonder Woman. You know, if it's good enough for Batman versus Superman, why not the chicks? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's totally fine. Whatever. It's great. I'm, I'm glad that they teamed up. It just makes perfect sense, especially like given the time. I really honestly think like this is um, not just true to the characters, but also true to like the television show and kind of like how it would have came across um back in the day like i mean i think it would have been more realistic for them to not fight in the tv show like i just can't see um linda carter and lindsey wagner going at it so this is issue two and this is very cool. The cover here is by Aaron Lepresti, and he's been associated with Wonder Woman. I want to see, he perhaps wrote Wonder Woman when Gail Simone was on it, but I know he's, he's done at least one run um, on Wonder Woman. And I was thinking of him earlier because he drew this really cool, and I can't remember it. It's like a post, um, like Chris Claremont coming back to the X-Men because he did a few series. And then... Um, Aaron Lepresti drew it, and uh, Callisto from the Morlocks had, like, tentacle arms, so he drew that. But I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. Feel free to leave in the comments if you know what the hell I'm talking about. Otherwise, uh, I just really like his art, and he's a good association with Wonder Woman. And um, there's a lot of fun stuff going on in his cover. And, you know, there's Oscar Goldman, there's... Drusilla, there's Steve Trevor, there's uh, Carolyn Jones, who was the first Queen Hippolyta. Um, it's funny, I've been watching, um, see, actually, um, the art gets better. So, like I said, she was kind of a newcomer, but you can tell that she's definitely, like, hitting her stride. And these likenesses are, like, pretty good. Like, that looks like a great Linda Carter right there. And that's just a really pretty page, I think. Um, some of the likenesses are tightening up and the art is looking a little more solid, I think. Still not crazy about the sort of airbrushy look, but that's just like the, the I don't know what it is in me, but you know, the, the kid who grew up on like 80s comic books, like I prefer a more, you know, penciled and inked kind of look but that's just my style preference okay so this is getting good like I said there's like tons of easter eggs in here and just so much respect for the source material I mean Andy Mangles really is possibly the only person who could do this kind of series this kind of justice because most people just like want to go with how cool it is to like pair up these characters and I mean, of course, there's going to be great fun. I mean, there's her infamous diving costume. I mean, how much fun is that? Like, um, and like I said, like the, the artist has definitely picked up. I mean, that's unmistakable. That's a lot of fun. But I think to an extent, we are missing a couple of uh, wow moment sort of opportunities. I would, uh, you know, I think that... Andy's such a thorough writer and such a good writer that, um, you know, he's definitely writing a story. And I think that um, they should have paused for a few explosive pinups. And speaking of explosive, this is really cool here. I love this. Uh, Glenn Hansen, if you're not familiar with his art, he's amazing. He's like the Al Hirschfeld of our generation. He does uh, great celebrity likenesses and he's done a ton of t-shirt de designs for hunties i don't know if you've seen like a lot of the golden girls and stuff like that like you may recognize the style he's done linda carter before breathtaking images just so great and um just to, to get him to do the meets the bionic woman and have them side by side like that that is like everything that is like ma major and epic to me 
So we have the same creative team going and Diane is still in her diving suit, her famous diving suit, which makes me very happy. I love these little moments popping up through the book, like with the little stars. Because, I mean, you definitely, you know, especially like the scene breaks or the transitions in the TV show, you definitely saw, you know, some of that with the uh, the shooting stars or whatever. Like, that's what I always kind of liked about the TV show, you know, like they definitely, you know, like with uh, Batman, with the, the homages to the comic books with the sound effects and things like that. And then we have Drusilla here. I mean, come on. Everybody's so in love with <clears throat> Deborah Winger as Wonder Girl. I mean, I don't I don't know why uh, she can't make a cameo in the next Wonder Woman movie. Patty Jenkins, are you watching? Of the 400 subscribers I have, Patty, are you one of them? Are you listening? Because Drusilla needs to make a cameo in the next... Uh, Wonder Woman movie. I wonder how, like, I mean, I believe that uh, Deborah Winger is still a working actress, so it's not like I'm completely crazy. Um, I really like that likeness of Linda Carter there. Good job. Now, these fembots are kind of atrocious. I've drawn a fembot before, and mine was way better. I'm sorry. I don't know. Maybe they, they do just look kind of cheap, so maybe that's, like, you know, working with what you have, but... This is so great there. I didn't, <laughs> oh my God, was B. Arthur in an episode of Wonder Woman? And I didn't know it because if she was, that would be killing me right now. I I would have had to have known that. There's no way I could have made it far. Is this like a nip slip right there? Hmm. PG-13 Wonder Woman all of a sudden. That's a great picture like right there. And the German Shepherd, Jamie's German, German Shepherd. My babysitter went to L.A. I live in L.A. now, but uh, she went to L.A. and went to Universal Studios and did a tour. And they showed the Bionic Woman's Kitchen. And she brought me back a picture. And it seems so uh, archaic now. But it was the most exciting thing ever. You know, I mean, that was before the Internet and all that stuff. Um, so here's issue four in this amazing Bill Sienkiewicz cover. Like, it's like all this circuitry and, you know, like, uh, sort of Xerox photocopy kind of pop art with the pinks and the purples. And it's fantastic. And I love Bill Sienkiewicz. And hats off to uh, the cover artists. I can't believe how amazingly cool they are and, like, all my favorites. So here we go. And I love this opening page. I think this is great. This is uh, Diana and Jamie inside the invisible jet. And that's just like really pretty to me. I like them. And they both look pretty there and it's fun. And they're like two strong, powerful females being kind to each other. And that's exactly how, how it should be. So I've been watching the Addams Family reruns on um, MeTV and Carolyn Jones was the first, she was Morticia Adams, but she was also the first Queen Hippolyta before um, Beverly Ann, what's her name? Cloris Leachman. And uh, she was so beautiful. Oh my God, she was perfect. Like she looked like she could easily be related to Linda Carter with the same sort of um, big eyes and the just uh, strong cheekbones and the just the dark hair and the light eyes. It was just a very striking combination. She, I, it's funny, and um, because I haven't really watched the Adams Family since I was a kid, and um, I have such a new appreciation for how hysterically funny it is. It's like I can't stop laughing. And I hear they're supposed to be rebooting it for Netflix, ne Netflix for Netflix, and they're getting uh, they're eyeing Christina Ricci to play Morticia Adams, and I think that would be awesome and totally cool. And the only challenge to that would be finding a Wednesday to be her perfect foil. But, hey, what are you going to do? What's an, what's a trip to Paradise Island without the Kanga? I'm so glad the Kangas are here. I don't think they ever made it to the TV show. Wouldn't that have been horrible? I mean, could you imagine? Oh, Nubia. Nubia is so great. They even had a doll of Nubia, which, Nubia, which is a little surprising to me. They had like all the dolls, 
I only ever had the Wonder Woman doll. You know, two of them. Two Bionic Woman dolls. I, I forgot what happened to my Bionic Woman doll, but I re remember um, me and uh, my cousin hosing her down in the bush. I don't know what happened. Such a great um, Betty Page. Um, I thought this was Dave Stevens at first, but it's after Dave Stevens by Terry Dodson. And I, that reminded me of the only crucial miss of the creativity um, or the creative uh, geniuses behind the covers is I wish it was eight issues because uh, we needed Adam Hughes and uh, Terry Dodson to do covers because they're um, and George Perez, but oh, that would have been so cool. Hmm, I bet they tried. Uh, everybody looking great here. Jamie, oh, I thought that, yes, is that that blue jumpsuit? I love that. That came with the one. One of the dolls I had came with the blue jumpsuit. The other one came with the white um, jogging suit. And I have not seen the original, like, Linda Wood Carter Mego doll. Such a great Frank Cho statue. I love those Frank Cho covers he did for Wonder Woman Rebirth before he got booted off unceremoniously. I saw their little cheesecake, so what? They're gorgeous. Anyway, so that was issue four, moving right along issue five. And speaking of artists um, associated with Wonder Woman, and I love that he did the Drusilla focused uh, Deborah Winger cover, um, Phil Jimenez. <clears throat> supposedly he's working on a black label um wonder woman book uh uh amazon amazonia i think or something like that anyway the histories of the amazons and it looks breathtakingly gorgeous i can't wait for it to come out he's you know um very highly detailed and just a great artist anyway so it's very cool like i said that they got all these great artists to do the covers <clears throat> oh no what's happening here <laughs> anyway i love it it's very you know it captures the feel of the tv show very much so so maybe i'll even be slightly forgiving of that airbrush coloring um I don't know, maybe it goes along with the look of the book. I don't know. But I have to say, you know, if you're to me this is like a dream come true product project, so I would have liked to see like a you know, a big a name to the book, but I mean I guess that's expensive and time consuming. So what are you gonna do? I mean, I don't think it necessarily suffered that much for it it's a great book and here we come to the last one so um i forgot the name of this cover artist it's gotta say cat stacks is that cat stacks yeah i think that's it anyway oh so the bionic woman has her Amazon garb on now. Well, that's good. Oh, and it's funny because, <clears throat> I mean, obviously this is uh, Wonder Woman arm armor straight up created for the series, I believe, because I don't recall ever seeing that in the series. But, you know, I think it's such a great mix. Like, I mean, it's so dedicated to the TV show. Obviously, it's Wonder Woman focused. You know, we're on Paradise Island and all that. But this is such a great treat for um, Wonder Woman fans, Bionic fans, nostalgic TV fans. I mean, it's just a great book. Hats off to Andy Mangles for pulling together like a dream come true series, uh, honoring these characters and just doing such a great job. If you're not familiar with it or haven't read it, um, you can still track down the trade paperback for a relatively cheap price on Amazon or the back issues or whatever. I highly recommend it. It's gorgeous. The covers are great by amazing comic book artists. And it's well written by faithfully like a love letter to Linda Carter and Lindsay Wagner. Wonder Woman 77 meets the Bionic Woman. 
by Annie Mangles. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Hit like, uh, subscribe, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. All right, thanks, guys.